three of them here. Uh, favorite Irish legend, which the Irish shop had a couple of them at some point. These are um, more the traditional Irish legends from the, you know, the Fianna and some of the various uh, Irish cycles. Um, there are shortened versions of them, but what's nice is they're bilingual. And they have English, Irish on one side, English on the other. So this is a very easy book to, if you're particularly interested in the stories and you want to try to read them in Irish. Um, and they didn't really mess the stories. I mean, they're simplified a bit, but not terribly. <laughs> okay. Um, this other one, Fairy Knights or Ikhanta Shi, are stories based around the various Celtic uh, festivals like uh, St. John's Eve, um, you know, May Day and Samhain and such. Um, it's bilingual, but the, the English and the Irish are not page to page, so it's a little harder to read. You have to kind of jump back and forth. Um, stories are so-so, but you know, if you're interested in those, it's, it's another bilingual book, which is easier than having to look up every word in the dictionary. Um, this other one, uh, Mission of er, Weir, is a sea mission or mission on the sea. It's bilingual. It... Um, has them facing pages. It is a bizarre story. I don't know. One of the captains is uh, one of the characters in here is a, a Captain Doeka, which is the invisible captain, and it, it's, it just gets weirder from there. So if you want to, but it is bilingual, so you can get the weirdness in two languages. So, um, so and the, and that, all three of these I actually picked up in the Irish shop. Now I don't know if they always have them. So I think I saw one of those last time I was there. So whoever gets down there first gets, I guess. Um, now, the next batch of books here, um, basically these ones, are books that are they're in Irish only, but they're aimed more at learners, and so they have little glossaries in the back, and they tend to control the vocabulary more, so it's not just free range of vocabulary. Um, I guess I'll start with these three. <laughs> um, these three books by uh, Rory O'Balia are um, Dunoir and Dart, Murder on the Dart, and Pover, which is the well, and Imiha, which is gone. And they're horrible, nasty stories. But if you like, to, if you don't mind reading horrible, nasty stories, um, and we, you know we hate all the characters and it all ends badly and all, then you can uh, you can try looking at these. Um, I actually used Dunoir in my last intermediate class, and I don't think I can take going through it again. So, um, but they are books that are relatively easy to read, and they have little glossaries that, you can, that tell you words either on the bottom of the page or on the back. So it helps you. Saves you a lot of hassle trying to look things up in a dictionary. So, you know, things. Sorachas the Gallery is another one, sadly, in the gallery, and it's a uh, better story than those are. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, they're very simplified, so they're, you know, hopefully you get bored with them before you get done with them. Um, but again, it has a glossary. Um, and Gal, The Promise, and this one was a much more interesting story, I think. So of the ones I've read, I think I like this the best of all the ones that have glossaries. And um, so it's, uh, if any of them, I guess I'd recommend that one. Uh, Turami is more, it's not really fiction, this one. It's a bunch of, uh, this uh, lady here, Arabicula Queen, uh, had taught Irish in, in Dublin, I think it was. And she basically wrote some little essays, like two or three page essays on different topics. So. Um, fear, I guess, Marathi, which are basically men and women of the house, like house, you know, like housewives and house husbands, I guess, and uh, you know, overchi housework, reina um, technologia, so the technological age, you know. So it's things that have to do, you know, and the first communion. Um, let's see, so interesting stuff. So, um, but. It's more, it's non-fiction, it's more current event type of stuff, which, you, you know, it's more, probably more useful vocabulary than maybe you can get out of the uh, fairy stories. <laughs> okay, so these ones all have glossaries in them. Um, Paloma, actually, I think there's a version that has it, I don't think the one I have. Yeah, this one actually should be under there. Paloma, horrible, just not a very exciting story, but, <laughs> but there, Paloma, for some reason, there have about a million versions of this, and they have tapes versions, and they have versions with, I don't know, probably a video of it, I don't know. But um, Paloma kind of falls under it. Most of these tend to be mysteries for some reason. <laughs> okay. Now, these other ones I have, the next three are simpler books, that, but they don't really have any... Uh, yeah. They don't really have any glossaries or such with them. Um, one, if you want the Bible stories, Jashkelta, 
uh, sorry, Josh Scale. Is scale is uh, basically means like good news or um, good tidings type of thing. Um, so they're basically retold Bible stories, uh, but they're simplified. But actually, the writing is very good on them. So if you want to go read those, um, you can actually, if you want, you, the 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 Bible is actually available in um, yeah. Irish and. You, they have like a huge one, <laughs> smaller one, so if you want something you're familiar with, um, you can get a hold of uh, some of the mass um, text. Some of that's available online, like the missile text and all that if you want, some of the mass and Irish. A um, couple, these are Kerry Irish, but it's glossy in the prick, the hills are green, which is short for an Irish expression, the hills are green, far from us. It's like the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. So it's a story about a cat traveling to the, in America. So it's a nice little story, and um, there used to be, and I don't know, it's, I think it's probably still available under one of the Gaelic L archives, I think it is, that someone had actually done notes on all of this. So this might be one if you wanted to look up the notes on it, and you can kind of try to read through it and follow along with it. Okay. Um, actually, after one of the classes several years ago, we went through this in the summer. Kind of just a group of students did that. Um, and then Mara Kapo is Libel Horse. <laughs> I guess you'll be too fair is the rest of the expression, you'll be grass. <laughs> but, um, so it's another story, uh, same author, and kind of same style, so if you want nice stories, so if you want something interesting to read. Um, uh, Harry Potter is an Irish, so if you like the Harry Potter stories, or you have the English one and want to kind of compare them and, and read through, then that's an, it's not, it's sort of make your own bilingual book, okay? Uh, now, this was... Uh, Written, you know, the, the Irish in here is not as literal or Irish as maybe you're going to find in some of the other bilingual stuff, so it might not be as easy to figure out what goes with what in there. But also, if you know that, you know, some of you maybe, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if any of you have the story memorized. <laughs> if you do, then, you know, it's great to read because you can, just see, you can figure out, you know, when you see someone's name, you know what part of the story you're in. <laughs> but, um, the other one, uh, I didn't bring it with me, but. Uh, Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass have also both been done in Irish, so you can get both of those if you're interested in you know the story. It's just something you can carry, you can follow along. Several children's books have been done that have been in English have been translated into Irish. So if you know what to look for, you can try to find it. The last one I'm going to show here, this is uh, not as easy, and these two books are actually harder uh, material, is uh, Kishta Kursi Raha which means sort of a treasury of current affairs. Um, what it is, it's, uh, there had been a book done called Word Gloss in English, and what it was, it was, it was aimed at, uh, I think, primary high school students to basically teach them terminology like, uh, you know, politics, religion, uh, senate, these things that, political terms that you needed to know, kind of for government and such. And they told about the origins of the word and then how they were used and like talked about the Senate, talked about the Irish presidency and who the presidents were and stuff like that. Um, if you're interested in that, and particularly if you're looking, you know, if you want to really get a feel for the terminology, you need to be able to read stuff in Irish having to do with, uh, you know, non-fictional type stuff. And this is a good book. Um, the problem is there is no translation for it, um, <laughs> so that makes it a little harder. Um, but one of the, the unique things about this is that it's actually been recorded. So there is a tape set that goes with it. And, um, and they have three different uh, people recording with different dialects. So you have in all three dialects, and they alternate on different articles. Actually, I think they, they, they alternate within the article. Um, so one paragraph, one will talk, and one. So it's actually rather, you know, given that you might not understand any of it, it's actually nice to listen to. Um, if, you know, if you're really planning on continuing with the language and all, it's something you find useful at some point in the future um, for two uses. One is to be able to look at the Irish and listen to it and try to see how the pronunciation matches up with the long amount of text. Um, and the other is, as you learn more, you might find this actually useful material to get the terminology and to try to understand. Okay? So why don't we take a break now and get some tea and uh, you're welcome to look through the books, copy down, ISBN numbers and such.